Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Three 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 bringing you. One of the biggest tournaments. In... One of the biggest tournaments that we've had in. There we go. Ever actually, there are just about twenty. There's twenty three players in this tournament. So we're going to be starting out Group D: Magman, Mortars, Mortis with most other people playing in parallel. So typically, just trying to get through all these games quickly, and then once we get to the semifinals, I will cast them all, all the semifinals, the bronze match, and finals. Before then, I'll try to just cast one match out of each round if everything is going at pace. That should be how it goes. Start with Magman and Mortis. Mortis should be fairly evenly matched, I think, but we'll have to see how the game works for that to go. So the players are ready. We're just about to get started. And here we go. First game of tournament is going to be Magman Mortis Mortis. Magman starting out in the southwest corner of the map with Klugabot Factory. Going for... There we go. Four, four glaives. Okay, going for a fairly aggressive opening. While Mortis Mortis also going for about five glaives. So both players going fairly aggressive. Though in this map, getting this many glaives is not... A terrible idea, but it is still a rather aggressive opening. Magman also only going for... Well, okay. Going for Metal Extractor, but that's a little misleading. This map does not have a lot of nearby Metal Extractors. Unlike most maps, you don't have three two-value Metal Extractors right by your main base. You actually have these three-value Metal Extractors, or little... Well, 2.67, two and two-thirds value Metal Extractors. Not too far away from your starting location, but still a bit of a walk. Right now, Mortis Mortis is going to be slightly ahead economically. Does have, well, does have a position on this Metal Extractor, but a bit more worried about getting the Lotus up first. Worried about Magman's Glaives coming in to deal with basically everything and harass him out. And... Give me one sec, I... Is this... I apologize, there is a weird discrepancy with the sizing of some of this stuff, but I will have that sorted out in just a moment. Sorry, I never actually got a chance to implement the win counter in game properly, unfortunately. It's smaller than I remember. Ah, oh, whatever, it's full time. Oh yeah, right, because this is the 2v2 thing I made it for. Well, this is the size it would roughly be if it was actually in the game. Let's go with that. Hopefully it's understandable. So, yeah, Magman's on the top. Anyway, back to the game. Sorry about that. Magman is just about meeting up with Moratorus Mortis, and the Glaive's meeting up. Magman trying to get a nice flank on Moratorus, but not quite able to manage. However, able to pull out one of Moratorus' Glaive's, killing him for free. Three on one. There's no way Moratorus Mortis is going to win that one, but... Mortis Mortis is getting their glaze to a really nice line, just prevent Magman's harassment from really doing any damage. Magman can't easily flank this. Can be flanked, mind you. These hills are still bot passable. It's a little tricky. You see there's quite a bit of purple patches there, so it's not the most reliably bot passable, but it is possible for the glaze to get up there. However, Magman getting their glaze stuck in a ball, not line moving. They're instead going for the ball move or point move, which is not that useful, unfortunately. Glaze cannot shoot through each other, so. Half of them will not be useful here, and this is where we start to demonstrate this. However, Magman does retreat in time. Back at the main base, Magman is continuing to go for more glaze, though a tick is forthcoming. And Magman and Mortis Mortis are about even for economy, though Magman is ahead by power. 14 energy to 10, and actually getting ahead by metal as well. But Magman is expanding quite a bit faster than Mortis Mortis, even though Mortis Mortis did have a slightly faster early economic lead. And Magman trying to harass along the corner, but Mortis Mortis already ahead of him. And has the Lotus in place. And Mortis Mortis going for a counter harassment. Magman trying to position themselves in a nice position to actually get through this. However, Magman only has line of sight. Can't easily tell where Mortis' forces are. And that goes for both players. Neither player well aware of where their opponents are. However, Mortis Mortis able to harass out better than Magman. And does have about seven glaives in one nice little group. Oh, damn it! Okay. Sorry about that. The audio 
OBS is a piece of shit sometimes. I really love the program, but its audio handling sometimes just completely drives me up the wall. Sorry about that. That just had to be reinitialized. Anyway, as I was saying, Mortars Mortis did have a really nice group of glaives, though a couple of them got hit out by a by a tick, and the rest of them just got into a bad position. Neither player has radar, which means that neither player is going to basically be able to tell what's going on. I mean, that's kind of the problem. When you don't have radar, you can't easily know where your opponent is. And in a map like this, game sense can only take you so far just because there's a lot of options, many of which are valid. Your opponent's probably going to go for a direct path, but you don't know when they're necessarily going to harass. You don't know when they're going to set up forces where they where it's actually inconvenient for your own harassment. I mean, Mortars and Mortis is also using warriors which rely a fair amount on radar because of their speed or lack thereof. So, Mortars and Mortis needs radar more than Magman does, and Magman is... Well, he... They're going to be trying. I mean, they're going to try to harass, but the Lotuses are in the way. So, Magman aware of quite a few of the defenses that Mortars and Mortis does have up, but even with that, Mortars and Mortis is still behind. Magman really just needs to get a good unit composition here. The Glaives aren't really the best idea at this point. Warriors and Rockos would be a good idea. Or actually, Air Switch, Air Switch and Ravens. Both players are floating, by the way. So Air Switch and Ravens would be very much affordable right now for Magman. And would be very useful for getting rid of the defenses, getting rid of the commander. Basically stopping the expansion from Moratoris. And that would quickly win the game. Magman would actually pretty much win the game outright from there. Magman, however, is setting up some ticks just up front. Basically, in every choke point, prevent Moratoris and Mortis from getting out without going over the plateaus. Which, as I mentioned before, is a little bit tricky. It's not impossible. In fact, this particular one is very easy to get through. But the players are not likely to take that route. Far more likely they're going to be going through the choke points where the ticks are, and these warriors are about to get stunned out. One of the ticks just about to go off. There we go. This is one tick goes off. And nothing here to follow up. Ma Magman decided to take this almost as distraction. Going around instead, and Mortars Mortis still doesn't... Actually, just has radar. Did finally get radar, but just now lost it as well. Wait, what? Oh! Oh, wait a sec. I... Wait, where's... Yeah, there's the radar. So, it's purely for lack of energy. Neither player building enough power plants, and I think Magma is going to take this... Oh, no, never mind. Nope, no, 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 no. Warrior does get in the base, does get built in time to stop the Glaze from harassing this out. However... Energy deficit is the only reason why Mortars Mortis does not have reliable radar. Magman, on the other hand, still has not built radar to begin with. Does have enough power plants for this to work out, although that's only because not enough production capacity going into the factory. And insufficient factory count. Though a jump jet factory switch, this is questionable. I can sort of see maybe for Jax, just to push really heavily, or possibly a sumo as well. I mean, pyros would work okay, but there are so many lotuses that... Well, no, actually, they wouldn't work okay, because there's too many Lotuses. Pyros are basically countered by Lotuses. It's kind of a four-numbers thing, but overall, just, no, that's not going to work. So, Sumo and Jack are the only ones that come to mind. Maybe Firewalker, but in any case, a Caretaker is going to be necessary for that to come out in any decent amount of time. That goes for the Cloakabot Factory as well. And honestly, I just don't get... I just do not get the jump jet plant. And if I sound different, it's because I woke up an hour ago and haven't actually spoken until I started speaking now. So it's called morning voice. My voice is going to be about probably a third or so deeper. Maybe even a fifth deeper. I haven't actually really measured myself. I think it's only a third, though. I'm pretty sure at least my lowest note ends up dropping by about, I think, a minor third. Normally, the lowest note I can sing is like an E3, and I think it drops down to like a C-sharp 3 if I've just woken up in the morning. But that's beside the point. The point is that Mortaurus, going for a bit of counter-harassment, Magman is going to be, well, getting a jump jet plan, but that has been spotted. Mortaurus Mortis well aware of this, or should be, at any rate. And yes, Mortaurus Mortis is well aware of this. And if you're wondering, I actually prefer the way my morning voice sounds. I kind of wish it could sound like that all the time because it is a nice deeper voice, but I can't. After actually, in about an hour, it'll probably go away. Half an hour to an hour, I, within the course of this series, you will hear my voice gradually increase in pitch as basically it warms up. 
Maybe Magma's commander getting under heavy fire by warriors, and these glaives doing what they can. However, Magma's commander moving straight into the warriors. That was not exactly what I'm sure Magman wanted to do. Oh, and a scuttle is what it's actually going to be built, not anything else, just the scuttle. Going for the commander kill, apparently, but that's honestly not going to amount to much. Mortars, Mortis basically has map control. Magman lost their commander, has a huge amount of economy, though, and finally getting caretakers here, and also finally getting an air switch, but not enough power plants, which is really embarrassing given that power plants do not require terrain in order to actually work. And there goes the jump jet factory. No real news there. I mean, that uh, under assault, there was nothing really stopping it, so... Mortors Mortis, I think, has game one. Pretty much the game one in the bag. I don't see what could possibly be done by Magman other than the air factory, which is finally up. Ravens are finally being built. But even then, Magman, despite their economic advantage, has not really taken advantages and is now losing their economic advantage thanks to these half dozen glaives. And really no defenses in the way, though Magman did get a few stunned... Sorry, Mortors Mortis did get a few stunned out. Magman got a tick off. That didn't work especially well because of no follow-up. Ticks, of course, require a follow-up force. Otherwise, you're just stopping the units from moving. It's not the worst thing in the world if you stop them from moving because it does re does buy you some time. But ideally, you destroy those forces. However, more towards more just being very, very focused about getting rid of the metal ice riders and doing a great job of that too. Magman going for fusion reactor. This is not the time or the place. There is not enough metal. Ten metal right now. Back when there was fifty, that would make sense. But now there's only ten. And the airplane factory is going down as well. Warriors trying to come out to deal with this, and I don't think it will. Because the, the airplane factory is getting in the way of the line on the side of the warrior. The warrior has to go around the long way, and by the time that happens, the airplane plant's going to go down. And 200 health, 100 health, and down it goes. The airplane plant is down, and so with it, Magma's chances of winning this particular match. However, this is a best of three. So Mortors Mortis has to win one more time in order to advance on to round two. Magman, on the other hand, will need to fight a bit more uphill, winning the next two matches in order to get out of there. However, both players did express dislike for this particular map, so I imagine that in the next couple games we will see them playing a bit more comfortably on maps that they prefer. Although, admittedly, more Magman's going to be the one choosing the map for next game, so Moratorus Mortis may be out of luck. However, if Magman does win, well, the Moratorus Mortis gets the next map choice, so ultimately it works out okay. Mortars Mortis, however, has been pushed back for the time being. A few Rockos are in Magman's base, but they aren't killing any dudes. They're trying to. They're dealing a bit of damage, but they aren't actually managing to do enough to be able to push in properly and win the game. However, Mortars Mortis Commander coming in. No upgrades on it, by the way. It's completely unupgraded or fit... No, it's completely unupgraded. And down go the Rockos as well. Magman reasserting dominance of their own base, meaning... Moratorus Mortis, while they do have map control, has not yet won the game. That being said, Magman's basically lost. Magman's only real asset is 27 energy. And going for an airplane plant, which is a good idea. Airplane pads are cheaper than factories, but... Honestly, rebuilding the air factory would be more useful in the long term. As soon as the metal... Just rebuild the metal extractors first, that's the big thing. Get these metal extractors back online. As many as possible, as many as can be reasonably defended. But honestly, I don't think it's going to matter. Magman probably should just throw in the towel, save their energy for game two. Really, this game is lost, and I think Magman is just going to tire themselves out trying to, as best as possible, fight uphill and win. Like, this game has been. I don't think Magman's aware. No, Magman's on line of sight. Mortors Mortis actually has radar and has the energy to make it work for the most part. However, not enough to see inside of Magma's base. Still enough forces, though. It doesn't really matter. Mortors Mortis has this game. Basically just waiting for Magman to realize to throw in the towel and move on to game two on whatever map he chooses, or they choose. Because, like I said, Magman's choice. And down goes the Cloakabud Factory, and that really gets rid of the choice. There we go. Magman realizes they're out. And that is game one to Mortors Mortis. Game 2 will be up as soon as the players get ready with that, as soon as they choose the map. Stay tuned for that. It will be up in just a moment. Because I'm not sure if there's anything to really talk about during the intermission, so I won't. As I tended to in the past. Makes it a bit easier to edit the video afterwards, but at the same time... It's a lot to talk about.
anyway, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in probably about a minute or two. Welcome back, 0K fans, and the players have been mercifully quick, so we are on to game two right away. No delays here. Mortors Mortis is going to have to deal with Magman choosing Badlands, though I think both players are going to quite like this map. They, I think both do like this map. It's a good map. It's a little bit, I mean, it's definitely very bot fo It's very much shield and cloaking bot focused, though admittedly, jumpies from Magman, and we saw last tournament actually in the finals, Amphs from Drone. I don't believe he's playing today, actually. I forgot to check, but I'm pretty sure that... I know Randy and Golda aren't playing today. I don't think Drone is playing either. I think most of the champions from the previous tournaments just decided to bow this one out. Which is... I suppose... kind of them? Although Randy did actually seem like he wanted to sign up, so it'll probably be the first in if anyone's late and needs a replacement. Regardless, Mortis Mortis going for five glaives once again, so very aggressive. Magman going for jump bots with three pyros before... Sorry. Yeah, three pyros before Freaker. So both players are being very aggressive. Neither player is going for any quick builders, which is frankly a little bit surprising on Badlands of all maps, given that there is a decent amount of reclaim here. I mean, 350 metal isn't bad. When you consider the cost of starting units, I mean, that's... That's about five plays right there. It's not a big... That's no small piece of economy, but at the same time, both players probably just too concerned about being harassed out. Magman going for Warriors very, right away, right after the Glaives. Apparently not too confident about their micro against Pyros. No Lotuses up, however, and Lotuses are the best answer. Well, Lotuses and Zeuses are probably the best answer. Zeus is a bit better early on, but yeah, that's typically what's used when you deal with Pyro. Oh, and Scuzzy pointing out that Randy... Or, yeah, Scuzzy, sorry. His Twitch name is slightly different is pointing out that Randy did in fact sign up and is in. I did not notice their name in the brackets, but I will go over the brackets once we're done this match just to double check what's going on and see if there's any updates from the other games. So I noticed some of the other games are being played, but I don't know what the results are quite yet. However, Magman just now getting up their Freaker has both their powers up and one of the powers we just did see go down. But... Right now, it's actually Mortis Mortis is ahead. Magman is relying very much on these two pyros to basically eliminate everything, which against the Glaze isn't a big deal, but against the Warrior, that is going to be a bit tougher, and if Zeus's or Rockos are built afterwards, particularly Zeus's, then I don't really see how Magman's going to get out of this without switching up their force entirely, and they are focusing very heavily on pyros. They are not going for any moderators or placeholders. Uh, placeholders would be an awesome choice, in this case, I think. Let's do a double check. Warrior range is... It is slightly lower than Pyro range. Yes, placeholders would actually be of great use in this game. It's slightly less than Pyro range, so Magman would have to be playing footsies with their Pyros, but still, it would be something to basically get rid of the Warriors without issue. As you can see, the Warriors are doing just a fine job against those Pyros. I mean, one Warrior basically took out a Pyro and Two warriors very nearly to go tooth, only losing one of their own number. Given the relative costs of each being that they are identical, I say the warriors are at an advantage. And Mortis Mortis did make a good choice going with the warriors. The downside is going to be if a switch to moderators happens, or a switch to placeholders, though placeholders would require a bit more, like I said, micromanagement footsies from Magman, while moderators would just outright win. I mean, they're skirmishers. They have 420 range. They basically have double the range, or very nearly double the range, of the warrior, which is take it out. As I mentioned before in several other streams, most particularly the stream on Thursday, Raiders beat Skirmishers, beat Riots, beat Raiders. That is how the game goes. That's the rough counter triangle for the game, and apparently... That was weird. Some, one of the players lagged out. No matter, however, Magman is continuing to build up an army of Pyros, and getting up their economy f on the energy, but not really pushing metal too hard. They're finally starting to expand on metal, but Mortis Mortis is ahead of them. Partly by reclaim, that's one of the biggest things, that Magman actually has not reclaimed their base, and I did say, there's about 350 metal just inside 
Okay, some of it has been reclaimed, but there's 350 metal inside there. That's a lot of metal. You do not want to have this much reclaim in your base and have it unclaimed. There we go. Magman is finally reclaiming that. Mortor's Mortis, however, already did do the reclaim. Has the unit advantage. The position is not best, however. Mortor's Mortis does have a couple warriors that are in two, or four warriors in two groups, and Magman's powers are all together. They're actually going to be able to just get the jump on this one warrior here. Mortor's Mortis, to point out, does have radar, is well aware of where Magman is. Magman, once again, however, purely line of sight. And this is not for power reasons like Laskin. This is just pure line of sight. Has not built radar yet. However, even with that, a couple warriors are able to force back the pyros. Unfortunately for Mortor's Mortis, one of the conjurers does go down, as does one of the metal extractors. And Magman now has an economic advantage. It is once again by reclaim, but there's nothing to be scoffed at when it comes to reclaim. And honestly, we're dealing with, once again, 300 some, odd re 300 some odd metal in reclaim that Mortor's Mortis could just claim at will. And apparently is. Or at least the commander is moving in a way that... No, that's defenses, what am I saying? Moving away that implies they're going to be building defenses on this ridge. Not going for the reclaim, but they're actually building defenses below the ridge. And Magman looks like they're trying to just force more towards Mortis' forces to split, and has gone for a moderator as well. The moderator switch is here, it is real, and it is going to be a pain in the butt for Magman, to, sorry, for more towards Mortis to deal with, because one of the warriors is about to go down, although this moderator is being kited out fairly well. In fact, let's double check the speeds. Nope, no, never mind. In fact, can't kite him out. The moderator is faster than the warrior, as one would expect. It makes sense. They are the skirmisher, they are the counter. And the load is coming up in here in advance of Magman's commander moving to the northwest. Now, Mortor is Mortis. I can totally see why they are setting up the warriors the way they are. I do think whoever that's splitting them up is not proving to be the best strategy. Some glaives are being sent forward to deal with the moderators. However, moderators have a 500 damage attack. The glaives get one shot. The upside is that they do use up the moderators' attack, meaning the, war the warriors can basically walk in while the moderators are recharging. And given that Magman is pure line of sight, it does mean that Mortor's Mortis' forces could be out of position. They could be caught out if Magman... Sorry, Magman's forces could be out of position because Mortor's Mortis has a bit more information. But at that point in the map, Mortor's Mortis not have very much. However, has killed a couple of pyros, and that's oh, a good 100 metal inside here. Or 200 metal, actually. 160 or so. But still, that's a lot of metal. Actually, 88 her. Yeah, that's 176 metal. Right there, for those two pyros, for basically nothing. Good trade. So, yeah, Magman, not fully aware of what's going on behind this area here, but overall, well aware of what's going on in the map. And Mortor's Mortis does have enough Lotuses here to stop the pyros from coming in. Not as so much to stop the commander, however, the warrior is coming up the ridge, and no moderators in place to stop them. Completely out of position, Magman's commander is forced to retreat, and the pyros as well are forced to retreat or die. Most of them, unfortunately for them, dying. Magman losing the radar they had built as well, so Magman... Out of information, back to pure line of sight while Mortis Mortis continues on with the advantage of radar. Well aware of these moderators coming in, can catch them out of position, in fact is going to catch them out of position. A couple of the glaives are going to die, but the rest of them will be able to just rush. They will bum rush the moderators, tearing them apart. One of them goes down, the other, another glaive is about to go down though. Moderator kills another glaive. There we go, that, that glaive kill. But the pyros have to move out of position because the warrior is coming in and the moderator not kiting as effectively as it could be. Still able to escape. But Mortor's Mortis ahead in military and now converting that into an economic lead once they get this... Once they're fairly safe... I mean, they are safe here. They're not feeling secure, but they are safe. Northwest base is theirs. The southeast base has not been claimed. And Magman, while they do have their northeast side, Mortor's Mortis rebuilding part of the southwest. This metal extractor is still kind of contested, but... Honestly, Mortor's Mortis has enough forces here that they can just get rid of Magman's forces. Magman has been losing pyro after pyro, and does not really have the economy or the number of caretakers here to actually deal with this. They can't build enough units in time. At this point, Magman's army basically consists of three moderators and their commander. That's it. So, these moderators will get bum-rushed, go down, and then Mortor's Mortis is advancing onto round two. Unless Magman changes up their strategy, goes for... Well, they're going for a placeholder, not a bad idea. I was going to say go for puppies. Because the puppies are cost-effective against glaives. Go for puppies. Possibly go for... A factor switch? I mean, it's just a matter of lack of economy, and also lack of caretakers in the main base. 
I'm actually a little concerned though because I am I am concerned. Magman has 26, 22, and yet is not gaining any metal. Oh right, because they're morphing. That's why. Yeah. See, that's that's the thing. Magman is investing all of their energy, well, all their metal particularly, into their commander, which is not the most efficient thing to do, especially given that they are playing jump bots against cloakies, and they need every unit they can get. However, this miner once again gonna go down. Though the placeholder does what it can, and actually that is enough. The warriors are moving into a great position for a pyro, which Magman realizing does build a pyro. However, it's not gonna be in time by the time this happens. The placeholder's reload time is, however, low enough that the units can't get out of position. The pyro will be able to kill it, and there goes pretty much everything. However, not enough. Footsie's not being played well enough by Magman. And the warrior able to take care of the pyro before going down itself. Like I said, that does require very careful footsies. Magmat's commander is pushing along the ridge right by Mortor's Mortis' base. And Mortor's Mortis should be able to outbuild Magman. Given that Magman has not gone for caretakers or really any sort of assist building so far. This is really a matter of just getting enough units. Probably just getting Rockos and Warriors, possibly Zeus's. And, oh, okay, Sharpshooter works too. That will be a bit tricky though. Mortor's Mortis is going to have to get around Magman's commander. Magman, by the way, does now have full radar coverage of Mortor's Mortis's base. Knows exactly what's going on in here, knows exactly where everything is, and doesn't know what the unit types are, so exactly is not quite the right word, but is well aware of what is happening here. Mortor's Mortis, not able to see quite as far, being that the radar is over here. So Mortor's Mortis slightly behind when it comes to radar coverage, but still in a pretty good position overall. Magman should point out this military advantage is primarily their commander. Their commander right now is worth 3575, so pretty much their entire military is their commander. And if that goes down, and with these defenses down, it may soon, though Magman looks like they're pushing in for what they're trying to make the kill. Sharpshooters are up, however, Magman has energy while Mortis Mortis does not. Mortis Mortis' lack of energy is going to be their undoing. If they can get three sharpshooters up, this commander will be one shot, but they don't have the energy to cloak. They literally don't have the energy to cloak the sharpshooter. The one thing the sharpshooter has as a major strength is being nullified, and I don't think Mortis Mortis is aware of this. Mortis Mortis' commander is also about to go down, trying to get out of here though, and just barely survives, though even then with burning damage, it may be too much, and Round two of Pyro versus Commander comes in, and Pyros will win this. The Commander has no way to repair in time, and down goes Moratorus' Commander. Both players... No, not both players. Moratorus lost to the Commander this game. Magman lost the last game. Not really a both player situation. It's... Magman is actually starting to come back to an extent. Though Moratorus Mortis still ahead economically, but not enough. Not enough units in play. <sighs> enough Sharpshooters, but the problem is this Commander is now cloaked. So trying to find us no matter of getting these... Glaives into a good position. If they hit Magman's Manor and kill it, Sharpshooters are cloaked. By the way, if they manage to can they detect Magman's Commander? No, not quite. The Glaives are not near enough. Although it's going to be very close, and Mortar's Mortis does actually hit Magman's Commander, detecting it, and the Sharpshooters will take it out. Well, okay, if they could actually hit for, if they could hit the broadside of the barn, they could take it out. However, unfortunately, due to their inaccuracy, they are going to die a horrible, painful death, and Magman is going to be very difficult to uproot. Not impossible, he's not, he hasn't won, but, or they haven't won, rather, but it is going to be progressively harder to deal with, and ultimately, the sharpshooters are going to go down. And with that, I think, I think we might even out the series, it might become 1-1. Magman, I think with this, yeah, this commander appears to be in a great position to deal with every all these glaives being poured out here. And Mortors Mortis without any backup factory or any backup unit reserve is pretty much hooped. There isn't much to be done here other than Mortors Mortis trying to build up enough units to deal with Magman's commander. But honestly, Magman's commander is healing up faster than Mortors Mortis can build up. And once the Cloakabot factory goes down, that will be game. And that's it. That's that'll be it. We'll be on to round three. 
Mortars Mortars may decide to go for a backup. Yeah, there we go. There's a backup. Gunship plant. Not sure what we're going to see there. The only likely candidates are a Black Dawn Rush or Valkyries. Nat Valkyrie. With this much health over a Nat Valkyrie pickup, we'll probably do no good. The only upside would basically be pulling Magmat's Commander out of the fight. Killing it by way of Valkyrie drop won't do the trick, but hey, removing it from play, that works too. However, is this even going to be up in time? I don't think Mortars Mortis has enough time. They're losing most of their main base. The one upside is that the Northwest base has not been attacked at all. But, yeah, once again, it is, as I said on Thursday... And not Thursday, I said on... It was Thursday. It's a Dota win. Once again, we have a Dota win. It's... That is the term I'm using for it. Off the top of my head, but it is a Dota win. Magman wins by Commander, and level 5 Commander at that. Fully upgraded Commander, rips apart Mortors, Mortis' base. The only hope that Mortors has is that this gunship plant produces something of use, and we are seeing a Brawler, which will not really be of use. Honestly, it's just... The puppies it'll help with, sort of, but the puppies are going to just hit it really hard. We've seen in the last tournament that puppies are basically the counter to... Gunships. Pretty much outright. Puppies puppies do a wonderful job against gunships. At this point, Magman has taken the entire map. Mortors Mortis has nothing going for them. Absolutely nothing. So, this brawler is the only hope that Mortors Mortis has. And it's going to be another minute before it's done. Best case scenario, it's a minute. Worst case scenario, it doesn't even get done. Magman just goes to the northwest because that's the only place left. And honestly, I think Magman might be aware of... No, Magman's still on line of sight. Hasn't rebuilt radar. Mortor's Mortis well aware of the radar. And well aware of where Magman is, but... Yeah, Magman's basically got this. Going for Archangels as well. Assuming gunships, apparently. I hasn't even seen them. No, really. Has not seen them. It hasn't seen the Northwest base at all, other than a couple Lotuses, which... Other than that, no knowledge of what's going on in the Northwest base. The gunship plan is completely unknown. And yet, Magman is going to be building Archangels because that's game sense. <laughs> because that's what you'd switch to, is gunships. Or you'd switch to... Honestly, the puppies, like I said, will do just fine. Once the Brawler comes in here... How many puppies? 31 puppies? Yeah, that's done. Half of them are going to kill the Brawler, and... Even half? Actually, is it even going to be half? I don't think it's going to be half, even. 4 and 10 each? No, not even half. It'll be about a quarter of them. A quarter of them will kill the Brawler... And then everything else would be torn apart by the rest. This... Well, it's... How much time is left? Oh, no time at all! Brawler is up! Mortars Mortis does manage to get this up and running, but like I said... Gonna find the commander. The commander is probably gonna go for the attack. No, it was on hold fire. Never mind. No, never mind. Does go for the attack. And the Brawler will go for the counterattack. But honestly, like I said, Magman's commander... That's just too much health. The Brawler is not gonna be enough. And here come the puppies. Not even caring with the Brawler, because Magman's Commander tears it apart instead. And Magman's Commander just going for the win. And that's it. That is game. More towards Mortis to Magman are even. 1-1. One, one. So game 3 will be starting in just a moment. Stay tuned for that. As soon as More towards Mortis chooses their map and the game starts, we will have the game. The... Actually, oh yes, I was... I was going to look at the, st the particular brackets. That so, Magman Mortors Mortis. Whoever wins this basically is who Cubay wins against. And okay, maybe not. Well, Cubay's been doing really well, so whoever wins this match is gonna have an uphill battle against Cubay. Like, there's no denying that Cubay is Cubay has proven themselves to be a really good player. I mean, last one v one tournament they weren't doing well, but they have been practicing the last two months. Like, if you think you know how Cubay plays from the last tournament, you don't. Bear in mind, he just won the 2v2 tournament. So, or won half the team that won the 2v2 tournament. So, not a bad player by any stretch. And I know Kane and one... I'm pretty sure Kane and one cut is going on right now as well. The winner of that play is Randy. Okay, there we go. That's where Randy is. And... Other than that, there's... Not much really to be said here. I don't know what other games are going on at the moment. Looks like... Hmm... Well, okay, this is hard to say. Nope, okay, it's just apparently us and... 
Looks like one gun cane. I don't know why. I'm not sure if people are playing as quickly as it could be. Regardless, that's that's not a problem for you guys here. That's just a problem for the tournament organization. So it is. Oh, I see. We have some people from the Grey Goo forums who I mentioned on my, well, who's got here through my signature. So yes, hello, people from the Grey Goo forums, because that is a game that I've been looking into as another game to add to my list. My currently growing list of games to do on a regular basis. Though Millie Gregu is still in alpha and there's an NDA and everything, so it's not like I can cast it, but the NDA will eventually be lifted. For the time being, however, 0K is... Well, there's no reason why he's not casting 0K. It's a wonderful game to cast. What a great game to watch. I'm not just saying that. It really is. And, okay, Magnum's going to be out for a couple minutes. I will be back in just a moment with game three, which will be on the map of Moratorius' choosing. And Moratorius is going to be just checking the map while Magman is taking a small break. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to game three of Magman vs. Moratorius Mortis. On Altair Crossing this time, Mortis Mortis chose that after losing the last game. And see how this goes. It will be very interesting given their playstyles have been very aggressive. Both players have been going for pretty much nothing but early raiders, like five or six, three to five early raiders into command, sorry, into builders. But on this map, look at all the reclaim rocks and trees everywhere. Mostly the rocks and synergy can be built anywhere, but yeah, rocks everywhere. So we'll see how they go, whether or not they start building up. Oh, great. Anyway, whether or not they start building up. Oh, shit, they found me! I must run! I'm sorry, I must go! Oh, wait, no, that wasn't police, that was an ambulance. Anyway, Magman is going for a quick dirtbag into Convict. So Magman definitely playing the map. Mortars, Mortis, on the other hand, is not. Mortars instead going for Scorchers. Three early Scorchers into a Mason, which is gonna be difficult. Admittedly, it's basically gonna be a matter of how well Magman's commander is used to defend, but it's a commander against a Scorcher. It's going to win. <laughs> as long as Magman doesn't overextend themselves, and given that they are reclaiming for power right now and not metal, which frankly is a good idea. I mean, they've got metal three metal extractors right now and no power plants, so reclaiming for power is actually, despite what I, what I offhandedly said right at the start of the game, the better option right now for Magman. And Mortor's Mortis just now getting the Mason, but is behind economically as a result of having to build up Power Plant as well as Metal Extractor. So Magman ahead economically thanks to being able to just build Metal Extractors while using the Convict to reclaim energy, not needing a Power Plant right now, and also getting a bunch of dirt bags because why not? They're actually fairly tough units, so yeah. If you're going for this sort of thing, they're cheap and tough. Not the worst idea, really. By the way, dirtbags do have a headbutt attack. If you haven't watched the game in a while, dirtbags do have the ability to deal some damage. Not a whole lot, like 20 or so. Oh, 36, it was buffed. Anyway, yeah, 36 damage. So it's not the best in the world. The biggest advantage is this. When they die, they terraform, which is what they've always done. And at this point, that's going to slow more towards Mortis right down. Has to go here, terraform this area in front of the factory, stop it from stopping their units, and... Once that's done, then their units can get out again, but still. More dirtbags coming in, and of course, as they die, they block off the units. Magman is being cruel here, but frankly, I think... No, this is the best idea. I mean, if you're kind of overdoing with the dirtbags, but dirtbags do deal damage. This isn't just trying to block out the factory. This is actually dealing damage. It's trying to kill the factory is what is the goal, and the fact that death causes a terraform, which is inconvenient, is more of a happy side effect at this point rather than what they're trying to do. They are focusing on the front of the factory, which, well, that is blocking off the factory. Scorcher still able to deal some damage, still able to get these dirtbags destroyed, but more and more dirtbags go down, the more and more this becomes a passable hill, which needs more terraforming. And on the other hand, Scorcher's coming in into revenge from Mortars Mortis, getting rid of the Metal Extractors and Lotuses, and actually, Magman's commander well out of position, so Mortars Mortis is gonna turn the tables here. The dirtbags can't do much. They can do a bit. They can headbutt, but two metal extractors go down. More towards Mortis ahead economically. Just need to terraform down this area from the dirtbags, and that will basically get them back in the game. So despite that, 
despite that whole dirtbag tower form thing, Mortars and Mortars is ahead here. Though more dirtbags are coming in, but another sneaky attack like that, and Mortars and Mortars will have the game. And it looks like that's exactly what it's being gone for. A Scorcher going down along the southeast, and a couple Metal Extractors as well. Mortars and Mortars is making sure to expand, not being slowed down at all by the dirtbags, not being distracted, not being put off, and getting some Stardust as well up front, just to get rid of the dirtbag. Admittedly, the dirtbags are going up north to avoid them, but still, Magman, I'm... Magman's focusing way too much on the dirtbags. It was kind of cute at first, and they are pretty tough, but they don't deal a whole lot of damage. 36 damage at pop is not a great amount of damage. However, with, how many dirtbags are here? Well, okay, there's... There's 19 dirt... Sorry, there's 15 dirtbags here. This might actually do something. No, not really not actually going to do anything at all. So, never mind that. Just block out the factory once again. I mean, really, it doesn't matter though, because no defenses in the main base, no force in the main base. Shield Blood Factory went down. Actually missed that. Sorry about that. But it was kind of a foregone conclusion. Convict goes down, and at this point, Mortis Mortis has the game. One Scorcher. This hero Scorcher. Most valuable unit of the game. Right here. These dirtbags still trying to do what they can, but that's it. The tide of dirtbags has been well and truly stemmed. Magnan going for a gunship plant switch, but at this point it's way too late. Mortars, Mortis going for a shield bot switch of their own. Doesn't even bother to terraform down this. Just doesn't care anymore. Although admittedly, they do have enough scorches to go for a dive, and Magman's commander is not upgraded. It would be a very successful dive too, though Mortars, Mortis is not focused on that. Instead focused on this area down here, which... Giving up to the dirtbags, the dirtbags just silently headbutting that Lotus into submission while the Mason is forced to retreat. I do think Mortars and Mortis should probably get rid of this hill area. Just de terraform the hill, kill the commander. He, searching for the commander pretty heavily, but not unfortunately finding the commander. Has the right idea though, is searching around all the resource spots, making sure that they have checked. I mean, given where they know about where the resources are. More Taurus and Mortis is actually going to look in the right place last. So Magman was rather clever in putting their factory here, right in the center of the map, because there aren't a lot of resources there. Units aren't likely to go there. And Gunship Factory is up. Black Dawn is up. Surprise attack with Black Dawns is going to be pretty effective. More Taurus and Mortis has still not quite dealt with this. Looks like they are not going to deal with it anytime soon either. And Scorch is dealing with the dirtbags. Getting rid of the last of the dirtbags, and then from there, probably going to go terraform. Now the dirtbags are well and truly destroyed. That being said, there is a Black Tongue coming in. It'll take about a minute and a half to come up, but once it comes up, it's going to be a big problem. And actually, I should double check. Oh! Oh! This is via... Other than the ramp right here in the north side of this particular plateau, this is vehicle unpathable. Vehicles cannot get up here. This purple area... Unpathable. That explains the Mortars. Okay, it doesn't explain why Mortars Mortis isn't dealing with this. Mortars Mortis is actually not aware of this at all. But Magman, on the other hand, oh wait, no, no, Mortars Mortis just got radar and yeah, now is aware of this. Well aware of this. Rogues are coming in to deal with this. I mean, there's how much time is left? Looks like we have about. Oops. Okay, that's odd. Lost the ETA counter. Regardless, it looks like it is about 30 seconds left. Magman's commander is going to go down to the rogues pretty quickly. I mean, Magman upgrading their commander, but it's pushed out of position, and Bandit coming in here just to get rid of the factory. Won't be able to get rid of it in time, though. Going for the Black Dawn instead, trying to weaken that as much as possible before the commander comes up to kill it. And a couple dirt bags in the southwest, not doing much. But Magman's commander is in place. However, the rogues... Rogues are coming in. How many rogues are here? There's four rogues so far. More are forthcoming. Vandals as well. Where now the Black Dawn's been made clear. Still no terraforming to free up these scorches. I think freeing up the scorches would win the game outright. And the Black Dawn is up! And that's where the Vandals will come in. Over Magman's commander is about to go down. One good felon shot, and that commander is dead. And Scorcher up as well. Doing what he can to get rid of the Black Dawn, which well, can hit. That's for sure. Unfortunately, the felon's not. Sorry, not felons. The rogues. Felons not in play right now. Rogues are not able to get rid of the Magman commander. 
Not quite yet. They are going. For, well, they aren't going for it anymore. They're going for the gunship plant instead. And honestly, Magman has no economy. If Magman's commander goes down, that would be absolutely. I mean, at this point, Magman has no economy regardless. But still, four metal something. It's not completely lost cause quite yet. Once Magman's commander dies, though, the Black Dawn will be in. The Black Dawn's not going to win on its own. And therefore, that is going to be game. That is going to be matched. And Mortar Mortar is going to be on to fight Cube. And there goes the Black Dawn. Black Dawn goes down. And with that, Magman's commander is the only thing left that Magman has that it gives them any chance of winning this match. And honestly, I mean any chance. I mean, 0.0001% is a chance, right? I don't know, I mean, technically speaking, but... Gunship plan about to go down, more towards Morse's commander, gonna just take this area completely. Just reclaiming it in advance. Doesn't even care, just gonna reclaim it. Well, reclaiming the unit on top, I mean. Reclaiming the halfway constructed unit on top, because why not? And that is the gunship plant. Magmen building up another metal extractor, trying to rebuild their main base, but honestly, that's the first place Mortuus Mortis would look. And the first place they will look, finding that out and... Actually, it doesn't even matter, I mean, Mortuus Mortis has enough radar coverage to know where Magman's commander has gone. And they would be exactly right, getting to that commander and ultimately killing it. This is gonna be it, these rogues and bandit will be able to kill the commander. Does have a ride cannon, so the bandit's not gonna have much of a chance. There it goes, down it goes, but the rogues... No problems for them. And not even a switch. I mean, it's just... This is it. And finally, terraforming down the hills here. Trying to get rid of that just to free up these Scorchers. How many Scorchers are here? Half a dozen Scorchers. All of which are right in this factory. So the half a dozen Scorchers, a nice commander dive would basically win the game. Although it doesn't even matter. Magman's commander is about to go down to rogues. One more good rogue shot. There's the volley and... Oh... Lotus distracts them quite nicely, but what's that down? Magman throws in the towel. That is game, that is match, and that is 2-1 for Mortortus. Mortus. So, same time, let's see what's going on with the rest of the tournament. Not much has been reported. I actually don't know what game is next. I will have another game in just a moment, but... Yeah, that, I don't know what game's up. So I will get back to that once we get another game. For now, however, stay tuned. I will find a game to cast. Because Magman Mortuus Mortis, congratulations Mortuus Mortis for getting on to round two against Cubay. And for the time being, just take a small break. Stay tuned. Oh, crap. Actually, I'm going to restart the stream. Just give me a sec. I'm going to restart the stream. I I sincerely apologize. I forgot to turn on stream delay. So I'm going to turn on stream delay and get the stream back on. So stay tuned for that. The stream will be off briefly, probably for about a minute from your end, as soon as you hear this. 